to proceed. So b- before I, uh, well, we are certainly going over the book of foods and we have finished in the last uh, uh, class the uh, the beginning of the Kitab al the Book of Foods uh, uh, by Imam ibn Qudama in his book Al-Umda. And we finished the talk about the defaults when it comes to food and when it comes to uh, things and actions and uh, meat uh, in particular out of all things having a different uh, default. Uh, and we talked about khamr, and we talked about intoxicants, and we talked about uh, wine turning into vinegar, and that led us to a discussion about exceptions and ongoing principles. Oh, oh. Okay, no, uh, that will actually look scary on. But, uh, so, we, we talked about uh, principles, ongoing principles and exceptions and different uh, sort of inclinations and different uh, mazahib. Keep in mind that when we talk about the exceptions and whether we accept the exceptions or not, it, it, it does not always lead you to permissibility. It sometimes leads you to prohibition. The fact that you are respecting a particular principle and um, you know going with this principle, it could sometimes lead you to Permissibility it could sometimes lead you to prohibition. Like in the case of Kham returning into vinegar, if you uh, hold on to the principle of transformation that the new substance will not take the rulings of the old substance because it has been, uh, it is a completely different substance now in name and in attributes. Uh, or if we talk about a dabba, a dabba, you know, if you apply the same uh, principle then the dabar will not become, will not be permissible. It will be impermissible because the principle is that predatory animals are impermissible. So here the exception will not, uh, you know, be uh, uh, sort of approved anymore according to the Hanafis and those Malikis who would also concur with the Hanafis on this. Uh, that the dabar is not uh, an exception and even some of the Shafi'is who would concur. Uh, and sometimes also, uh, and, and this, the idea of respecting the, the sort of al al-qa'ida, respecting the continuity of the principle, respecting the consistency of application, can sometimes also be important for the coherence of certain theories, like our theory on riba, for instance theory on riba. Now, you have, you, you cannot exchange uh, gold for gold, uh, you know, except equal for equal hand to hand, right? And the, the different usurious substances, you cannot exchange them except equal <coughs> for equal and hand to hand if it is the same uh, item, barley for barley. But if two items are within the same group, it doesn't have to be equal for equal, but it has to be, has to be hand, to ha- hand to hand. Gold for silver, barley for wheat. It doesn't have to be equal for equal, but it has to be hand to hand. So how is it then that we can come to terms with Ali ibn Abi Talib selling one camel for four? One camel to be del- uh, you know, delivered now for four. They're not non-usurious items, non-usurious items. But it is the same item. So isn't there a problem here? If I sell, you know, identical iPhone, I give you now, like this iPhone, a new one that just came out, and I exchange this one for four to be delivered in two weeks. Is there a problem here? Well, the Shafi'is and Hanbalis will say no. There is no problem. The Hanafis will say there is a problem. And that is a report within the Hanafi Hanbali Madhab as well. There is a problem. Because if it is the same item, it cannot be 
exchange for increase and deferment at the same time. Because otherwise we will compromise our RIBA theory. It would be a loophole. It will be a hole in the theory. So it is the same item. It is not going to be exchanged for increase and uh, deferment. I love that concept. Now, the Maliki said, Maliki said, they agreed with the Hanafis, but they added to this if they have the same quality and same function. And I love the nuance added by the Malikis, because it can make us come to terms with uh, one camel for four, because that one camel may have, had, may have been, and it was reported that it was very special. So there are milk goats and there are meat goats. They don't have the same value. Therefore, if you exchange one milk goat for two uh, uh, meat goats, there may be some point here, but two items that are identical to each other should not be exchanged for increase and deferment because that will cause problems to the coherence of our theory of usury. So making sense and making sure of the coherence uh, of the principles, of our legal principles, is a good idea, is a good idea. That does not mean that you disregard exceptions that are established in the revelation. Most of the time, these exceptions that are established in the revelation, there will be comprehensible reason for their exception. There will be comprehensible reason for their exception. Or even if there is no comprehensible reason, but it will not demolish your principle, accepting them will not demolish your principle, then you can accept them. Finally, some people will accept them regardless of the impact of that acceptance on the ongoing principle. Uh, and I can't fault them, it's just their intellectual orientation. Having said that, let us go over the different animals that he would consider haram here. And we may actually go over time by 10 minutes. He says, Fasl, wal hayawanun qisman, bahrayun wa barray. Subsection, animals are of two types, sea animals and land animals. فَأَمَّا الْبَحْرِيُّ فَكُلُّهُ حَلَالٍ إِلَّا الْحَيَّةِ وَالضِّفْضَعَ إِلَّا الْحَيَّةِ وَالضِّفْضَعَ وَالْتِمْسَاحَ As for the sea animals, they are all permissible to consume except for the snake, frog, and crocodile. That is the sea animals, snake, frog, and crocodile. Remember, we said before in the last class that we will go back and, and uh, pay attention to his statement, uh, they are all permissible except for that which is filthy or harmful, such as poisons, when he was talking about non-meat items. Anything that is haram, how do you know it is haram? either by textual evidence or rational evidence that is based on the text that requires some rationalization, extra, extrapolation, and so on and so forth. So for instance, OK, so what are basically the reasons of prohibition? of anything. Can you mention some? Harm, of course. Harm. Can you mention another one? Hmm? Najasa, filth. Uh, 
and feels this is not najasa. Najasa is the particular, you know, spit is, could be filthy to some people. Snot could be filthy to some people, but it is not najis. Human urine is not just by agreement. Stuff there, okay. Um, harm? What else? Huh? Textual. Textual. No, we are still here with uh, things that are comprehensible. Intoxicant. Intoxicant. That is in particular with drinks, but you could add it under harm. It is a special type of harm, intoxication. Mustakhbath, hmm? yes. Khabith, mustakhbath, khubth, which is uh, disgust or repulsive, disgusting. This pulsive, yeah? Constant is it not close to filth? It is, it is different. It is different from filth. It is mustakhbath. Even flies. Like, can you eat a fly? If it drops in your food, you take it out and you eat, no problem. Can you eat the fly itself? Why? Not, be, not because of this, because of this, because it's mustakhbath, repulsive, disgusting. People of sound nature would not be eating flies, would not be eating cockroaches, would not be eating mice. Not, not always. As we will come to see here, it, the, these are not nudges. Uh, the, these are not always nudges. Not everything that is repulsive is nudges. Most of them are not nudges. Hedgehog. Why is it nudges? OK, so now I want here to say, let us have like double line here, triple line, and then add some things that are textual. Uh, uh, you know, prohibition tasrihan, tasrih, you know, explicit prohibition of eating a particular animal. Khinzir, pork, explicitly prohibited. You don't have to even look for a reason. And some will be explicitly prohibited like domestic donkeys that would not be sort of that were, the other reasons will not apply to it. Because why is it that we can eat horses but not donkeys? Because the prophet said don't eat donkeys. OK. Uh, and he allowed the eating of horses. So tasrih explicit. Now, al-amru bil so commanded killing, he commanded the killing of particular animals. And nahyu an al he forbade the killing of particular animals. Frogs would be here. He forbade the killing of frogs. He commanded the killing of certain animals. Snakes, scorpions, kites, crows, mice. Rabid or vicious dogs. Scorpions and snakes in different reports. The, you know, the sometimes mentioned scorpions, sometimes mentioned snake. You know, خمسو فواسق يقتلن في الحلي والحرم. 
الحية أو العقرب والحذاء والغراب والفأر والكلب العقور. These are five things that can be killed, whether in hell or haram, even in the sacred precinct, you can kill them. If you can kill them, would you be allowed to waste sort of good food, wholesome food? No. Then it means that they cannot be eaten. If you're not allowed to kill them like frogs, that means you can't even slaughter them. You can't, you just, you're not allowed to kill them, period. If you have been explicitly forbidden from, eat, from eating them, such as donkeys, that's it. You are just forbidden from eating them. Or pigs, pork, uh, so let us go over what he says and then, you know, put, add some more in, under each in each column here. فصل والحيوان قسمان بحري وبري فأما البحري فكله حلال إلا الحية والضفدع والتمساح As for sea animals, they are all permissible to consume except for the snake, frog, and crocodile. Snake, frog, and crocodile. You will expect that there will be some disagreement here. Because Allah says, أحل لكم صيد البحر وطعامه. So all the game animals of the sea have been made permissible for you. There were no exceptions here in the Quran from seafood, all seafood. Everything that is in the sea is permissible. Now, why are we having a problem with al -hayya? Because it looks very much, the snake, it looks very much like the one outside, and it would be mustaqbath repulsive. Why are we having a problem with the timsah, the crocodile? Because it is able to live outside, so it is not really a sea animal per se, but rather can live in both habitats, uh, although it is predominantly a sea animal, but since it lives in both habitats and it is predatorial, a fanged predatorial animal, where is it predatory? Oh, well, we'll come to this. Uh, okay, we will have it under harm, uh, predatory. Because eventually they, we can have it separately, but eventually predatory animals have been forbidden because Their vicious nature can be transmitted through their meat to you. You get the hormones and you know whatever sort of uh, chemistry transferred to you through the meat, and that will make you acquire some of their vicious predatorial nature. And that's the explanation of the scholars. We can. I mean, it's, okay, let us, you know, because uh, some people can say everything is harmful that is not halal. Let us add intoxicant here and add predatorial here or predat faint predatory animals that would include birds with claws or clawed predatory birds, clawed predatory birds. Okay. And keep everything separate. So you will have uh, 
harm here will be harm that is not that doesn't have a, there is no cause apparent cause except the harm just pure harm you will have tobacco here for instance you'll put tobacco here the prophet never talked about tobacco um, you will have a sacamonia here in large amounts, not in small amounts. It's a, a, a particular bushy plant that grows in the uh, levants, and it is um, sacamonia. They used to use it as a stool softener. So it, it induces diarrhea. In large amounts, it is called you know, expectedly, expectedly in English, scamonia or scamoni, because it grows in, the, uh, in greater Syria, and this is how they came to know about it. So it is coming from, uh, our, you know, for, from scamonia. Okay, so in large amounts, this would be forbidden in the Hanbari Madhab in large amounts because it causes harm in large amounts. That means if you eat 200 eggs, maybe they will consider this forbidden in the Hanbali method. Uh, because Sakamonia explicitly in Musharrah Muntahar Iradayat, it is mentioned, or Zafaran, or other plants that would be okay in small amounts will be forbidden in large amounts. So this is the category of harm, but there is no other reason except the harm. No other reason to make this forbidden. It's not najis, it is not intoxicant, it is not khabis, it is not uh, you know, animal to begin with. There is no explicit prohibition. There is no prohibition from killing. There is no command to kill. It's just harm. That's it, period. And poison will be here. Anything that is poisonous will be here, including poisonous animals will be here. Given that the effective cause here is harm, when we allow people to have a nicotine patch to get out of smoking, given that the effective cause is harm. Yes or no? Yes. yes. Would we allow people to get on, uh, you know, uh, in a program, to enroll in a program that will administer small amounts of uh, methadone, for instance, which is an, like an, uh, something like an opioid that you can wean people off of a little bit easier than other uh, opioids, will, you, will this be allowable? Yes, because it is about the harm and, you know, here also it would be the intoxication or some level of intoxication confounding the mind, but if you can have it in a controlled amount, that will not confound the mind, but will allow you to withdraw, to, to help the person, uh, wean the person from uh, their dependence on other more dangerous substances, then yes. Because if the illa is rational, you can, you can uh, handle, manage the irrational illa rationally. If the illa is rational, you have room to basically rationalize. Poison, can you give small amounts of poison to people to immunize them against larger amounts? To, it is called what, desensitize them? Yes, because the illa here is harm, and here you're not causing harm. Harm, you're trying to protect them from harm. Okay, so everything here, this is a, about rational sort of uh, illa. Hmm? 
we're not going to talk about vaccines now. <laughs> but the, the idea here is, uh, so at Divda, he said except all sea animals would be halal except the snake because he considers it mustakhbas, sea, the sea snakes, the crocodile because it is predatorial or predatory, and the difda because there is the particular prohibition from killing the frogs. Um, and certainly these things are controversial. Some people would allow the eating of crocodiles uh, because they are sea animals. Uh, but certainly the, the authorized position in the madhab is the prohibition of crocodiles because they have two, a double habitat and they are fanged predatory animals. As for the land animals, it is forbidden to eat because uh, a Muslim reports from Ibn Abbas that the Prophet the Prophet ﷺ forbade all fanged predatory animals and clawed birds. Uh, fanged predatory animals and clawed birds. So he mentioned the first one, كُلُّ ذِي نَابٍ مِنَ السِّبَاعِ based on this hadith, all fanged predatory animals. And all fanged predatory animals were forbidden uh, because they may call, transmit to you their predatory, vicious uh, nature, their ad with their kalab, their aggression uh, through their through the hormones and other chemicals in their meat. And by the way, and according to the Hanbali Madhab, it is detested to eat meat frequently. That is all meat, including beef and lamb and everything. It is detested to eat meat frequently uh, because it causes that intensity or that sort of, as Omar radiallahu anhu said, فَإِنَّ لَهُ it has intensity. Stay away from meat because it has intensity like wine. That does not mean don't eat meat, period. That does not mean there is any virtue in being vegetarian. No, there is not. You know, rationally, there is not. You, there are essential amino acids in meat that are not present in vegetables. The Prophet ate meat. The Sahaba ate meat. It cannot be a moral virtue. Uh, there is no scientific. Uh, backing for this, uh, yeah. contrarily, uh, the science uh, uh, proves that you know eating meat is important for uh, human health and human strength. There's essential amino acids that are present in meat that are hard to find in plants and all of that stuff. Given we have said all of the above, it is advisable that you don't eat too much meat and you don't eat meat too, frequent, too frequently because like you eat for breakfast like sausage and whatever, uh, and then you eat for lunch meat and you eat for, that's crazy. So, <laughs> uh, anyway, so all clawed birds, domestic donkeys and mules. Domestic donkeys and mules. Where do I put domestic donkeys and mules? So domestic donkeys were explicitly because as you know, uh, Muslim reports from Abu Talha and reports from Jabir and others, Naha Rasulullah Sallallahu Rijs. The Prophet وسلم, on the day of Khaybar forbade the eating of domestic donkeys and said they are rijs. Rijs, filth, filthy, najis. Rijs like najis. Rijs, 
رجز بالسين رجز بالزاي you know نجس all the all the above all the same so filthy نجس and so the, some of the scholars used that wording of the hadith and said the illa is rich. Some of the scholars said the illa is la tuhammas. It you know, does not get divided in the booty of war. That's a very weak illa. Some of the scholars said the illa is jawal al qariya. Jawal al qariya means that it is jalala. Jawal al qariya means it goes around the village, eats everything that is there, eats garbage. So the illa is that donkeys are usually jalala. Jalala would mean what? They eat filth. They eat filth. So would you want to add jalala here? Yes and no, because Jalala can be purified. It will not be a permanent prohibition. All you need to do with the Jalala is to keep it and feed it good food until it, its meat becomes wholesome, tayyib. This is not a permanent prohibition. This is a temporary prohibition. What is like Jalala is plants that have been irrigated with filthy uh, water or plants that have been fertilized with filthy stuff. You just wait until it is irrigated by pure water and then becomes tayyib. Uh, so Jalala is the filth eating animal. But this is special because this is a temporary prohibition. It is not a permanent uh, prohibition. The filth eating animal. So some of the scholars said donkeys because they are jalala. Some said because they are not divided in booty. Some said because they are rich. The prophet said they are rich. Why do you need any more illa than the fact that they are rich? So some, are, some say he said they are rich to make them not eat it. He said they are rich in the not in the literal sense, but he said they are rich because they are not they are now haram. So if they are haram, they are rich because they are haram. But why are they haram is not because they are rich. They are in fact because of some other reason. And here are the other reasons: one, two, three, and four. Which one is the fourth? People use them to ride them. So why, like slaughtering them, will deprive people of that usage, usufruct, uh, deprive people of transportation. Therefore, that is, the Prophet ﷺ wanted, because of certain circumstances in Khaybar, not to deprive people of their transportation and forbade the eating of donkeys. At any rate, whatever the illa is, we don't eat donkeys. OK. Walbigal, mules. Mules will bring us to another discussion that since the asl, the default in animals, is prohibition, remember? Animal food versus other foods versus all things, the default was Prohibition. فَكُلُّ مَا تَوَلَّدَ مِنْ حَلَالٍ وَحَرَامٍ فَهُوَ حَرَامٍ Everything that is uh, basically produced by the coupling or the mating of halal and haram animals will take the side of which one of their parents? The haram one, not the halal one. So a mule is the child of a donkey and a horse. Horses are halal to eat because they were eaten during the time of the Prophet and there was no prohibition. This was reported from Aisha, it's reported from many other scholars, uh, it's reported from Jabir that we used to eat horses during the time of the Prophet And uh, so born to a horse and a donkey, horse is halal to eat, donkey is haram to eat, the mule is haram to eat. 
because the default is impermissibility. Therefore, when something descends from two animals, one is halal and one is haram, the default is haram. They gave examples of a dog mating with a goat. I don't know if this ever happens. And then they say that whatever product uh, uh, of that mating will be haram, I, you know. But then they talked about other things also when it comes to, uh, you know, the different creatures mating with each other. Uh, I don't know if all of those examples are, do actually have some reality, but the mule is there to, uh, uh, it does have reality. And then the sheikh said, Scavenger birds such as eagles, vultures, pied crows. Um, these, uh, or the abqa has like a, a buqa, has like a spot, spotted crows, uh, pied and spotted crows. So the crows and vultures and uh, uh, eagles. Uh, these are clawed birds, by the way. These are clawed birds, uh, but they also are scavengers. They eat JF. They eat dead me animals. So, uh, unlike sukur, for instance. وما يستقبث من الحشرات كالفأر so they make a difference between the crows, the bird, the, the crows, the, they have different types of crows. And forgive me, I, I'm not an expert on crows and this stuff, but they say that there is, the ghurab is zara, is halal to eat, the ghurab that, uh, that lives on farmland, the crows that live on farmland are halal to eat, and these types of crows, the pied and crows, and, crows and the, the spotted crows, and these different types of crows are haram to eat. I don't eat any crows. Uh, and then he said, وَمَا يُسْتَقْبَثُ مِنَ الْحَشَرَاتِ كَالْفَأْرِ وَنَحْوِهَا إِلَّا الْيَرْبُوعِ وَالضَّبِّ وَالضَّبَّ لِأَنَّهُ أُكِلَ عَلَى مَئِدَةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمُ وَهُوَ يَنْظُرُ وَقِيلَ لَهُ أَحَرَامٌ هُ قَالَ لَا وَمَا عَدَى هَذَا مُبَاحٌ All unwholesome slash repulsive animals such as pets, mice, and the like except for the gerbo and the dub lizard because the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw it consumed at his table and when asked if it, is, if it was haram, he said no. Aside from these animals, all others are permissible to consume. So وَمَا يُسْتَخْبَثْ All the, everything that is uh, repulsive. Hasharat does not necessarily mean insects because he said like mice. So when the, we call the translation of hasharat now is insects. But to them, it's every small little thing that is sort of repulsive and disgusting is hasharat. Mice are hasharat. Jerbo, hasharat. Geckos, hasharat. You know geckos? Jerbos is like something that is a mouse that, is, that lives in the desert, looks like a mouse. In fact, it's controversial whether the gerbo is halal to eat or not, or haram to eat, because apparently uh, there is reported that Umar ibn al-Khattab like, uh, decreed an expiation for killing a gerbo in the haram, so it means that it is halal to eat, but at the same time it looks like mice, and Imam Ahmad said that it looks very much like a mouse, so it is haram to eat, so there's controversy here. Could there be controversy? Yes. There is so much agreement, but then we will have some room of controversy, particularly in this area. Repulsive. What do you mean by repulsive? And where did you get this from? From Allah saying, to make permissible for them that which is wholesome, and to make impermissible for them that which is repulsive. What is repulsive to you is not repulsive to me. How do the Hanbalis calibrate this? They say, كل ما كان مستقبثا للعرب ذوي اليسار في زمنه صلى الله عليه وسلم من أهل الحضر everything that was repulsive to the Arabs city dweller Arabs affluent city dweller Arabs 
uh, during the time of the Prophet Why affluent? Because people that are not affluent would basically eat everything during their time, scarcity of food, they're living, in, they're living in the desert, scarcity of food, people who are not affluent, people that are from the Badia, Bedouins, nomad, nomadic people or Bedouins, would just eat everything that moves. Uh, and up until now, there are peoples that would eat everything <coughs> that moves. So then you stakhbas meant because they were the people being addressed, the Quraysh was being addressed by this book, uh, the first sort of audience. And the first audience, it doesn't matter that the, you know, what they thought. Yes, because it was revealed to them in their language and they were meant to be the prototype, not the only Muslims, but the prototype, the first embodiment, the first example, the first prototype, first model. Therefore, it matters. However, this is not set in stone. This is basically how the Hanbalis try to rationalize it. There are other rationalizations within the Hanbali method and without, such as the average. Average between Ahl al-Hadar and Ahl al badiyya Average between the affluent and the poor. Average between everything. Al-Wasat, the people who are in the middle. Between the poor and the rich, in the middle. Between the city dwellers and the nomadic, uh, or the nomads, people who are in the middle. With sound nature. What is it that they would consider repulsive? There is another way to, to figure this out to attach it to what? Your culture. What is repulsive in your particular culture would be uh, repulsive. Now, let us, let us, you know, because it is the overwhelming sort of, um, the, there are certain things that are repulsive, that have been considered repulsive, that have been reported by the majority of the scholars to be repulsive, that we should consider repulsive. But beyond this, beyond this, when it comes to different things, we will not consider, we, we will basically say there is room here for cultural differences. There is room here for cultural differences. Now, the Hanbali is considered repulsive, for instance, al fil elephants. And they consider al fil also to have a nab or to have canine teeth. And Imam Ahmad said, Lam ara minhu nab. And I have not seen anyone with a bigger canine teeth, nab. But does the fil kill with his nab? It could, but you know, it, but that is not the usual thing. The feel is not predatory. The feel, you know, it can kill you. It can step over you and kill you. But that is not, you know, necessarily a predatory behavior. But they added to this because it was like a weak illa. You know, the fact that he has teeth that are sticking out. Uh, we call them nab. Does not mean that it's frank predatory animal like lions and cheetahs, and tigers, and foxes, and hyenas, and all that stuff. So, but in order for them to support their prohibition, they also said that it's khabith, mustakhbath. Okay, you know. Uh, so mice, I guess all of us should agree, you know, and if you don't agree, well, then we'll have like a big issue with you. <laughs> Uh, mice should, should be mustakbas, you should be repulsive, you know, nobody should be eating rats. Uh, and, and then feed. And then they, they would add to this, like for instance, al-qird, monkeys. So why is al-qird mustakbas? Because they felt that the qird, they, they want to put the qird here because yeah, it has aggression, it, it, you know. But at the same time, you know, it's not really like lions, it's like a monkey. So they said that it is repulsive. 
you know, and it is, you know, someone if someone told you that this is like my, a mon like a, a grilled monkey, it's not particularly appetizing. <laughs> uh, so, but, but at any rate, the, at any rate, there is some room here for disagreement among the scholars. A feel is not forbidden by agreement. The crocodile or the elephant. The crocodile is not forbidden by agreement. There is some room for difference here. The elephant, according to the authorized view on the Hanbali Madhab, the elephant is forbidden, the monkey is forbidden, the crocodile is uh, forbidden, the gerbil is forbidden, although there is disagreement within the Hanbali Madhab about the gerbil as well. Um, mice are forbidden, geckos are forbidden, all of these are forbidden under the banner of mustaqbat or khabith or unwholesome, repulsive, disgusting. He said, وَيُبَاحُ أَكْلُ الْخَيْلِ وَالضَّبْعِ لِأَنَّ النَّبِيَّ صلى الله عليه وسلم أَذِنَ فِي لُحُومِ الْخَيْلِ وَسَمَّ الضَّبْعَ صَيْدًا It is also permissible to eat the flesh of horses and hyenas since the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم permitted the consumption of horses of horse meat and referred to the hyena as game referred to the hyena as game and we have gone over this discussion. You know, horses, there is no reason to forbid them, right? Even if the Prophet did not allow their consumption, what would be the reason to forbid them? Huh? Use, use utility. Yeah, but that is not enough reason to forbid them. You know, because you could say that uh, cows also would help with farming and you know, so it's not enough reason to forbid them, but we, we said that for donkeys. Uh, but there are other reasons. We don't know exactly why the Prophet ﷺ forbid the eating of donkeys, but we, we could have applied the default to horses, that the default is that everything is halal to eat, animals are halal to eat, except, you know, fang predatory animals, uh, filthy animals such as pork, you know, Allah called the trips, you know, um, and har you know harmful stuff, whether it's animals or not, disgusting ones. Uh, so uh, horses, we we don't have a problem uh, with horses, even though like you know a lot of people would not eat. Did the Prophet eat horse meat? No, he did not. You know, a lot of people would sympathize with horses, like you know, it's like your horse. <laughs> Uh, but we're, we're, keep in mind that uh, that uh, zebras are halal to eat. Not so that's why we call domestic donkeys, because they meant that zebras uh, are halal to eat. That's why they always call humor ahliya, not al wahshiya, ahliya, domestic donkeys. So. All of these things that are in the wild would be halal to eat. Giraffes, halal to eat. So why is giraffe halal to eat and elephant is not halal to eat? Because it looks prettier. You know, it's not, it doesn't look disgusting. You know, the, the feel looks a little bit repulsive. The giraffe does not. Looks like a deer that is sort of... <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about evolution here, I think. Kangaroo? Uh, huh? Kangaroo? Uh, well, a kangaroo is like something to actually reflect on. The, you know, if, if you take kangaroos, for instance, uh, are there predatory, the fang predatory animals? Uh, would they cause any intoxication? No. Uh, are, we can't say they are filthy because you need to prove that. Uh, like if their meat is proven harmful, that's a different story, but that's a different story. The only thing is, is are they repulsive to eat? Is it repulsive to eat kangaroo meat? Uh, and that, w people will uh, disagree over this. Is it repulsive to eat kangaroo meat? Uh, so then the, the, the exception was the Dab'a because Ibn Abi Ammar, which is Ammar ibn Abi Ammar, 
and it was also reported from Arwa ibn Zubayr, said to Jabir, side hyenas are game animals? He said, yes. He said, can I eat it? He said, yes. He said, did you hear it from the Messenger of Allah He said, yes. And this was reported by Sunan. Yes, it was not agreed upon like the hadith of the Prophet forbade the eating of every fang predatory animal or uh, clawed birds. But it has been deemed authentic by many scholars. And there are reports from other Sahaba that they allowed the eating of hyenas. But go back to the previous class and listen to our discussion about why the Hanafis and Malikis would not, and that is not all the Malikis, because you know that there is a disagreement within the Maliki Mazhab about all the Sibah, all you know, predatory animals. Uh, some Malikis would allow that, and, and that is why the, the sort of the famous story about the Malikis and you know, their allowing of the eating dogs and, and things of that nature. Um, but if there is a disagreement within uh, the Maliki Madhab about the Sibah in general, predatory animals in general, and there is another disagreement within the Madhab about dogs and the eating of dogs and the Najasa of dogs and all of that stuff that uh, relates uh, to dogs. But um, go back to the previous class and listen to what we said about why the Hanafis and the majority of Malikis would not consider hyenas permissible to eat, and why the Shafi'is and the Hanbalis would consider hyenas permissible to eat. Take five minutes for people to leave. And